sandwich, maybe. That's about it. There you go. Being a beast in both the NFL and competitive Smash Brothers isn't easy, but that is where Le'Veon Bell comes in. He may be new to the scene and still learning, but his playstyle is definitely unorthodox and one of a kind with Mega Man. His usage of close combat lemons in addition to strong edgeguarding game make him an interesting underdog as he is a great player to learn from if you're just starting Smash. This video is analyzing the playstyle of Le'Veon Bell. My name is Phantom Phoenix, and without further ado, let's get started. Looking at Le'Veon's set against Beans, this is one of the most particular ways of how you could play against Samus, and I love Le'Veon's usage of the close combat lemons which allows him to also deny many of the close combat options coming out from Samus. Not only do we corner Samus in this scenario, we also are able to throw Samus off stage multiple times with Leaf Shield and with Lemons. That's a very good start off to a game, and if you get Samus at the ledge, that's where we can get some down air setups, and you'll see Le'Veon do this a little bit later on. Looking at this interaction here, we see that Le'Veon gets stuffed out from the neutral B from Samus, and then we see him go for the close combat Lemons again. Lemons not only have really good frame data, they also allow Le'Veon to knock back his opponent and then follow up because of the weak knockback that Lemons have. It's strong, but weak enough so that way he can follow up with grab, follow up with leaf shield, or even chase down with back air or forward air. In this ledge scenario here, we see a textbook example of how to deny recovery zones from your opponent. We see that Le'Veon throws out the Leaf Shield here to cover the first zone. Then we see that he goes for the back air which covers the jump because he knows that he already covered one option from his opponent, back air will be able to deliver the next. Unfortunately he misses the F smash here, if he would have charged it a little bit more maybe be able to reach the Samus there, but this is still an excellent example of how to edge guard your opponent. If you guys have seen my video on maximizing your offensive play part 2, you all already know about the concepts of edge guarding and recovery zones. What I love about Le'Veon's playstyle is that he understands what a zoner is looking for over the course of a game. In this segment, Le'Veon is able to read this Samus like a book. Right here after this roll, we can all pretty much predict what this Samus player is going to go for. In scenarios like this, especially zoners, whenever they roll to the middle of the stage or roll underneath the platform, they love to shield because it gives them a sense of protection, not to mention a sense of stage control. Le'Veon anticipates the shield from the Samus player and goes for back air here in this scenario. Now, the Samus player could have protected himself if he held shield in this scenario because of the multi hits coming out from Mega Man's back air, but nonetheless, Le'Veon is able to get the last laugh. In this situation here, we see yet another trap come out from Le'Veon Bell, and this one is really nice. So we see that the Metal Blade was thrown down, the Metal Blade missed, but what's nice about this scenario is that we had the Samus player trapped underneath the platform. What makes this trap really nice is that Le'Veon poses two threats to the Samus player. One being Le'Veon himself above the Samus on the platform, and two being the Crash Bomber on Samus. What makes this situation even more scary is that technically there is a third threat being that if Samus gets hit by the Crash Bomber, then Le'Veon can follow up. The Samus player can't jump in directional air dodge in this situation because he'll either get hit by the Crash Bomber, he might avoid it with his directional air dodge, but Le'Veon's going to follow up with that because he'll run off of the platform. The Samus player can't jump in this scenario because he's going to get hit by Le'Veon, so what he has to do is continue to hold his shield, and Le'Veon abuses the shield damage done to the Samus with the Crash Bomber and lands a back hair of his own. Before I go to the next set, I quickly have to analyze this last stock taken by Le'Veon, and this is a really nice setup, and this is really just him baiting the Samus player. We see that we shoot the Crash Bomber on the Samus, the Samus goes for a wild option off stage. Up air off stage, I don't think this would have been the best bet, you could have went for a forwarder and wait for Le'Veon to come back. The Samus player gets greedy for a kill in this scenario, and nonetheless, Le'Veon ends his stock with a down air off stage. Very nice execution from Le'Veon's Mega Man. If there's any suggestions I could have gave the Beans in this match, it would have been to edge guard Le'Veon. I think that that would have been the strongest thing to do, especially since Mega Man's recovery is kind of exploitable. Yes, he can attack and then use his jump later on, but I believe that Mega Man's recovery would have been the best thing for you to exploit. Later on in this video, we'll take a look at what took Le'Veon out of the tournament, which in fact was him being edge guarded. This game against not off tempo was definitely a hard one for Le'Veon, but this had a lot of interesting interactions with grenades and lemons and the many other projectiles that Mega Man has at his disposal, but the one thing that not off tempo was able to capitalize on was closing the gap between Mega Man and Snake. 
Right off the bat, we see that Not Off Tempo is able to land 54, make that 67% damage onto Le'Veon. But what's nice here is that we see that Not Off Tempo is playing extremely patient against this Mega Man. He knows that grenades are going to clash with the lemons. He gets hit by one to two lemons. Then we get in this scenario here. He sees this pattern. He knows what's happening. Whenever you see that jump coming out from the Mega Man, he wants to go above you and use the Leaf Shield. Luckily, he's able to use the great frame data coming out from forward tilt and is able to get some separation between him and Mega Man. What makes this Snake Mega Man matchup extremely interesting, it's all about patient play and whoever is the best opportunist. Because there's going to be opportunities when you can close the gap, it's whoever makes the best options and makes the best decision making is who's going to win the game. Oftentimes in these zoner versus zoner matchups, you'll find situations like these, where both characters could punish in a given situation, but one does something over the other. Here, Le'Veon could have went for up smash to protect himself from the forward air coming out from Snake, but instead he was kind of caught in the moment, but we're able to land and he's also able to throw out some leaf shield and then we're back into some more neutral play. What I love about this segment here is that we present an option to not off tempo, letting him know, hey, we're probably gonna land with back air here. That's what the Snake player thinks, we land here, pull out Leaf Shield. No matter what the matchup is, this seems to be the area of the game where Le'Veon is strongest, ledge trapping his opponent, finding those little setups that makes his opponent really have to think about their next decision. Now let's take a look at how Le'Veon loses his first stock. What we should have done here is instead of taking so long to jump and getting hit by this up smash, what Le'Veon should have done was immediately jump and directional air dodge to the ledge here. In the snake matchup, the last thing you want to do is to give him more time to set up a ledge trap against you. Really good snake players will do some elaborate tricks to get you into an unfavorable scenario where their ledge trap will cover two to three options, sometimes even more. Where Le'Veon tends to struggle in this snake matchup is the amount of projectiles that he's throwing out is sometimes counteracting with the grenades that Snake is able to pull. We see that Not Off Temple pulls out a grenade here to get him out of this Leaf Shield combo. He pulls out another grenade because Le'Veon is just playing Mega Man using his lemons, being able to space with those lemons, trying to make sure that he's constantly dealing damage. Le'Veon pulls out another Leaf Shield and puts himself into a war scenario. Playing against Snake, you really have to understand the matchup. You do not understand the matchup and you do not understand when they're going to pull a grenade to break a combo and making sure that you're not just randomly pressing A buttons around Snake's grenades because you'll grab the grenades and sometimes it will then explode in your hand or you'll have to quickly get rid of it and the Snake will anticipate the grenade coming at them. If the Snake player anticipates the grenade coming at them because they know it's going to explode, they'll then punish the end lag of you throwing the grenade. In this scenario here, we see that Le'Veon is giving the Snake player enough time to set up a ledge trap again. Instead of shooting the crash bomb at the side of the stage, Le'Veon could have simply air dodged back onto the stage. But instead, we see that the Snake goes for a simple up smash, making sure that he covers one option, goes for the up tilt to cover the roll. It's also worth mentioning that Le'Veon could have gotten his air dodge read by the Snake player, so what he could have done was also just simply grab the ledge there and probably go for a normal get up and shield the up smash coming from Snake. Now let's look at the final interactions of this game. We see that Le'Veon is at the ledge, he's away from the ledge, pulls out the leaf shield, and I love this interaction right here. We see the grenade comes out from not off tempo, immediately Le'Veon sees a grenade and says, look, I'm not going to fall for that trap again, I'm going to space myself and go for some lemons. Unfortunately, not off tempo goes for the random back air out of the full hob. That was, that was an interesting approach option, and honestly, I can see why Le'Veon got hit by that. Most Snake players don't go for that type of stuff, but hey, sometimes it's the mix-ups that gets you the kill. Now don't get me wrong, back air is a strong move, but I have not seen anything like that in a while. Looking at this last set, this is where Le'Veon falls short and it's against Ridley when it comes to edge guarding. Here we see that Super PC really abuses the speed of Ridley, is able to rush down Le'Veon and goes for a nice neutral air, make that two neutral airs out of shield. And what's really nice about this scenario here and how you went for the neutral out of shield, he understood both the limits and the frame data of Nair. But see here, this is where Le'Veon also thrives as well, is ledge trapping. We see that this nice back air comes out from Le'Veon, make that another back air. And his back air usage, spacing of back air has always been good. But the one thing I feel as though that Le'Veon lacked is when he got in these little close combat interactions, Le'Veon should have been utilizing up tilt as his out of shield option, especially in close. Up tilt's a great move when it comes to killing, has extremely high knockback, and it can even be used to hit people who are above you. It's not recommended because of the end lag but up tilt has a lot of great usages and i think i would love to see that a little bit more when it comes to Le'Veon's playstyle. in this dash attack conversion here we see that silver pc is able to force Le'Veon off stage what's really nice here is silver pc's usage of ridley's jumps he uses one jump to pros a threat to Le'Veon, make Le'Veon jump and then he throws out the back air to get the kill on Le'Veon. very very good usage of using ridley's floatiness to his advantage 
This segment right here is a small micro interaction, but I want to point it out because I absolutely love what Le'Veon does right here. He uses the Leaf Shield over top of Silver PC, and instead of going back into Silver PC, he does what he needs to do. He puts separation between him and Silver PC, the space he needs so he can reset into neutral, play the neutral because he knows that's how he's going to win this game. Le'Veon's win condition is neutral. He knew in that scenario that he would be better off if Silver PC approaches him and he punishes a laggy option or misplace or whiffed move from Silver PC and he gets to kill that way. This situation here is what I just love from Le'Veon's Mega Man. This here is a textbook example of catching your opponent off guard and catching their option. He knew that the way that really is most likely going to approach him is through the air. Really players love to land with things like forward air and love to land with things like neutral air. They're their main tools. So Le'Veon calls this out with a really nice executed back air ledge trap. Looking at the final sequences of game one, we see that Silver PC is really up on Le'Veon. He wants to end this game. He has two stocks. He wants to close it and end this quickly. But what I love what Silver PC is doing, he's quickly speeding in on Le'Veon and he gets this up smash kill here. What's nice about this up smash is that not only is it used as just a pure rushdown option, this up smash here sets the tone for game two. This up smash from Silver PC not only closed out game one, it also sent a message to Le'Veon. Basically saying, hey, if you don't wall me out for the entirety of game two, any opportunity I see, I will deal a big swing of damage to you. Transitioning over the game two, this is exactly what Silver PC does. We see that Le'Veon is at the ledge yet again. We see the back air come out from Silver PC. Forward smash almost misses, but what's really key here is that Silver PC gets put on this platform here. Le'Veon tries to take shelter and get the distance he needs, but Silver PC calls him out with a back air. What's really nice here is that Silver PC, he knows what Le'Veon wants. He knows that Mega Man wants that space in order for him to then wall out, go for neutral, get those lemons, and get the openings and force Silver PC to approach him. It's not so much that Silver PC is just outright beating Le'Veon because these two players are pretty much evenly matched. It's more so Silver PC is winning the mental warfare against Le'Veon here. This next example is an odd one because I'm surprised Le'Veon did not punish this. We have seen this scenario before. The Ridley player jumps over the leaf shield or jumps over projectile and then tries to approach Le'Veon. We saw this very same scenario in game one and I'm surprised that Le'Veon was not able to recognize this. He could have threw out a forward air to protect himself, shielded the back air coming out from Silver PC, or simply ran away from the back air coming out from Silver PC. There's a lot of options Le'Veon could have done here and unfortunately him not recognizing the habit from Silver PC cost him a stock. Skipping ahead, we see the strong suit of Le'Veon Bell come into play. We see some nice ledge trapping here. We see a lot of pressure coming out from the ledge. We see we also get Silver PC to jump, but unfortunately we get caught in a scenario where we're trying to set up a leaf shield again and we get hit by back air from Silver PC. That seems to be the main kill option coming out from Silver PC here. And unfortunately, Le'Veon was not able to predict it that time. But we have to figure out a way to get a kill on this Ridley with Ridley being at 164. Ridley, he's heavy, but not too heavy. And we see that Le'Veon gets the forward smash. The final sequence of the tournament for Le'Veon and his run is unfortunately a tragic one. Le'Veon goes for the accidental, had to have been a miss input, directional air dodge off stage and Silver PC gets him with the up special spike of Ridley. Nice play from Silver PC to put Le'Veon out of bracket. If you enjoyed today's video everyone, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. I have many other guides on this channel that will relate to content just like this where I'm analyzing pro players, helping out with beginner tips, intermediate tips, advanced tips, tech and more. So if you want to see more of that content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. My name is Phantom Phoenix and I'll see you all next time on Dark Sparks Gaming.